The 90s were without a doubt the golden age of the Japanese sport cars. From Supra and RX-7 to GTR and NSX, every major brand had a car that could go easily with the best that Euro could offer. But while they had a proven potential in everyday world, the same hadn't happened in the racing track, with names like Porsche, Mercedes and McLaren BMW taking the wins. But the introduction of the BPR Championship, later FIA GT Championship, gave everyone the opportunity to start from the ground up. And so did Nissan. So hello guys and welcome back to another video and here is the story of the Nissan R390 GT1. Like basically most of the car manufacturers, Nissan also had a short run in Group C, where even though they came late into the game, they had quite a successful run, with the 1990 being their best year, where they finished the championship in the third place. They, but their true success came in the 90s, when they dominated most of the decade in G JTC and JTCC with their GTRs. Happy by the success of the cars, Nissan decided to go one step up and entered Le Mans in '95. They decided to enter a pair of JTCC Skylines, dubbed GTR LMs, but the cars were so heavily modified that they were considered GT1 cars. This meant that Nissan had to go against much better cars, cars like McLaren F1, 911 GT1 and F40 also meant that Nissan had to build homologation versions of this car. So the competition was very strong and the win almost impossible. Nissan entered the GTR LM in 95 and 96, with 96 being their best year when they finished in the 15th place overall and 5th in the GT1 class. Understanding that the upgraded road car just had no chance on winning Le Mans, Nissan decided to build a car from the ground up, which later would be homologated in order to comply with the regulations. Nissan created a dream team for the development of their new baby champion. The development of the car was held by Nissan together with the English company TWR. TWR was a good choice, since they were the winners of the past two Le Mans with their Porsche-powered prototypes. While for the design, two British men were brought, Tony Southgate and Ian Callum, both very respected designers. Callum was a designer for TWR and until that point had designed a number of cars, but the DB7 was the car that he was most known for while Southgate was mostly specialized on racing cars. His portfolio was full of racing legends, from F1 and Indy to Group B and C. Since the front engine layout didn't work with the GTR, Nissan decided to go for a mid-engine layout, like the rest of the grid. For the engine, the team went for the trusted VRH V8 engine. Nissan had developed this engine in 1988 for the R89C and later had used it on the R90C. And after that the engine wasn't used until TWR got hold of it and decided to use it on the R390. This version, named VRH35Z, had a displacement of 3495 cc and produced 640 horsepower at 6800 rpm. Like the rest of the BPR cars, Nissan had to detune the engine on the road version, so reducing the power to 550 horsepower. The design would be influenced by two major points. First were the BPR homologation rules, which meant that the car had to use some mass-produced parts, 
and like Porsche and Mercedes, Nissan just went with the headlights, taking the headlights of the 300 ZX. The second thing that would influence the design of the R390 was the XJR15 of Jaguar, which they had built in collaboration with DWR. So many molds and tooling parts that were used on the XJR15 were also used on the R390, something that made the car to look a bit similar. Thanks to this and the fact that the engine was mostly ready, the car was ready in a short time. Three racing Nissan R390 GT1s were launched at Le Mans in 97. Two cars left the race, and the, la and the latter one finished in the 12th place overall and 5th on the GT1 class. The following year, Nissan slightly improved the aerodynamics of the car by lengthening the rear overhang for more downforce and raising the wing in order to reduce the drag coefficient. All the cars entered by Nissan managed to pass the 24-hour marathon, completing the race with uh, dignity in 3rd, 5th, 6th and 10th place. Basically, the whole racing life of the R390. 
with the rule changes of 1999, Nissan decided to abandon this project and started to work on the R391 LMP. Like with all the GT1 cars, the cool part was that the cool part about the championship was that manufacturers had to homologate their pistons. But differently from the rest, Nissan only built one road legal R390, which was the required minimum. The road version of the R390 GT1 differed from the racing one since they didn't have a rear wing and additional headlights in the front bumper. Also, the car has some more stylish parts and a much better leather interior. The car had an acceleration time of 3.9 seconds and a top speed of 330 km per hour. Originally, this car was red and was mostly used for aerodynamic tests, but later the car was painted in blue. Despite a $1 million price tag and offers from different buyers, Nissan decided not to sell the car and is currently stored at Nismo's Zama warehouse. A total of 9 R390 GT1s were built, 8 racing versions and 1 rod legal version. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.